Molly made some great soup. We're gonna break bread, enjoy this wonderful meal, and look at it. this. Tap it. Good what? Pretty, I think it's done. It's a little crusty. hollow, or yeah, it's pretty yeah. crusty on top. And it, it really is. Well. It's I think the little it marks too. from where we cut the. Yeah, we cut it here and here. Mm. So I'm excited to break it and eat it and share with them. Well, hi, I'm Amy, but this time I am not in Amy Roloff's little kitchen. Guess where I'm at? I'm in my daughter's house, Molly. I drove up to Spokane because I wanted to see her before I got back to filming, see her and her husband, Joel. Yeah. So we've been just having a really great time. And I told Molly when I was coming up here that I wanted to bake bread with her. Molly, to me, has always been my baker. She's really into bread, cinnamon rolls, I mean, that's really what you did yeah. at home before you, yeah. yeah. And so she's just really good at baking because she's very precise. She's very process oriented, very recipe oriented, which I need to get better at. But anyway, so I'm in Molly's kitchen and we're gonna bake bread today. She's made a fantastic soup. So it's kind of cold and you know, whatever here in Spokane. And we just thought that would be a really good meal, didn't we? Yeah. So what okay. kind of bread are we going to make? So um, this is just a recipe I found online called, um, it's like for a crusty artisan bread. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to kind of just have that like round sort of round plop shape. Okay. shape. And then um, the idea is that the crust would be pretty like thick and crispy, not not as soft as, you know, like a like sandwich bread. Like a French bread, bread yeah. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So Now the one thing I wanted to make bread with you, Molly, was because yeast, I don't know what it is. It's been my nemesis just because I don't know if it's the water temperature I'm not doing right or something because my bread just doesn't seem to rise. In fact, we made pizza dough yesterday and I'm going to attempt to make pizza dough in my kitchen when I get home. But I mean, it just turned out so perfect. Yeah. It was this, you know, this, it just puffed up. And the one thing, what kind of yeast do you use? So I use active dry, so I don't, I, I don't have as much experience with like the instant or quick rise yeast. Um, I think they would accomplish the same thing, but I, think they I, do just, too. I just do the regular active dry. It just, you can get it in a jar or the packets or whatever. And I'm gonna have to look up that online because I'd like to know, do you treat these different yeasts differently yeah. or it's how they react I think differently I, or faster yeah. or something. Yeah, so, um, and yeah, I don't know, I think. So you use rapid rise. No, active dry. Active. See, yeah. look at that. Nothing, I'm already nothing confused. Nothing quick or rapid. It's not. I think the other those types just yeah. the ideas they changed it somehow so that you don't have to. The, the rise time is shorter, but I just okay. use the regular active. active. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna and, go home and get active rise. But we've already yeah. measured the uh, not measured took the temperature of the water to make sure we have yeah. it. Yeah. In fact, I'm gonna do it one more time because that's key with the yeast is. Um, because if you have it too fat, too I mean too hot, yeah. what happens? You well, you want the water temperature between like a hundred and maybe one ten okay. is kind of where you want to be. So I'm at one hundred three right now. So do you I'm think gonna... that's enough, or do you think you should do it a little more? Or... Um, I might pop it in the microwave for like a few seconds. Just so if you have yeast into water that's too hot, it kills it, right, Molly? Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, it won't, it won't, um, it won't activate properly. Obviously, too cool, the yeast isn't able to ferment or do it, it, it just, same. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't activate. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna remember that. I'm gonna try active yeast and see what my results are then, because I think if I get a good result with the yeast, I'll be able to understand what the other types of yeast are doing a lot better, but yeah. Um, and the recipe doesn't call for this. You don't have to, but um, I usually add like a little bit of either sugar or honey to the water because I think it just helps the yeast. Like the yeast needs okay. to feed on something. Okay. Again, you don't have to, but I just found that. So it's just a little bit. Just Yeah, like a yeah. teaspoon or something. I just put it in there and then I'll stir it all around and get the yeast in. Okay, so. so we've got water at the right temperature. Did you take it again? I, mean, I just check. yeah it's checking. fine but it's at I think I need a better thermometer yeah too. just a digital so it's at 106 so okay so 106 is a good one so you just put a little bit of sugar in the water 
Now, it matters how much water in here, right? Yes, so I have three and a quarter cups for this okay. recipe, and then I'm gonna do one and a half tablespoons of yeast. And then where's the salt? Do we have any salt in here yet? Or um, no, not yet? No, the salt will go in with the flour. I've seen some bread recipes that tell you to add the salt to the water, but I've also read that that can kill the yeast. See, I think so too. I think it's a lot better when it's added to the salad, uh, uh, the flour. Yeah. We just had salad. <laughs> so I don't add yeah. the salt to the yeast while it's activating. I wanna make sure I have enough yeast here, sorry. And I think we've got six, six and a half cups of flour in here. Uh, yes. And this and is just half. your all, your typical all-purpose flour. So how much is this? Uh, one tablespoon. We need one and a half. One and a half tablespoons of so. active dry yeast. Now, does this recipe, does it matter what you use or they're calling for active dry yeast? They call for active dry. Okay. So um, again, I, it, it's gonna just affect your rise times and stuff. Like I think you can substitute them, but again, I don't use the quick rise, so I'm not, I don't know how it reacts. But I wonder if by using active dry, you use a tablespoon and a half. If you use some other kind of yeast, do you need more or less, you know? Yeah, so then I just give it a little stir. You can use a whisk or something. By the and then we wait to see, to, what, what what did you call it? Proof it? Weird, this is acting kind of funky. Look at it. it see, that's what happens to mine sometimes. That's never happened to me. I wonder if... It's too hot? No, I think it just kind of clumped. The yeast kind of clumped together, so I'm just gonna break it up a little bit. Do you have a little whisk? Yeah. And then once we get the yeast stirred up in water, we're waiting for it to proof. So you see it like foam up, right? Yeah, you should see it foam up within a few minutes if your water's the right temperature. And that's kind of just one way to make sure your water's at the right temperature. And um. See, I hope we didn't run into a problem I usually use the yeast in the jar, so I hope something funky didn't happen, but we'll see. You think you should break that up a little more? Yeah, I might get the whisk out. Or here, let's see. Well, the whisk is in here, so I don't... I've never seen it like coagulate like that. I can definitely smell it. I mean, it smells mm -hmm. like yeast. And like when it foams, I, I mean, I don't know, when I first started baking baking bread and the recipes would always tell you to wait for it to foam, I never knew like how much foam, like what does that look like? like yeah, what does that mean? It'll be pretty obvious if it's foaming how it should. Like there'll be a bunch of, I've even seen it, like I'll be watching it and it'll be like a explosion of foam that comes up from the bottom and like it'll cover the whole top. Like you it should be obvious. Um, so how long does it take to see it? You, you just said a few minutes, right? Yeah, anywhere from maybe one or two to five minutes, kind of depends on I your... I think that might be, I don't know. Broken up enough? This isn't, yeah, it's not expired. So I would just maybe let it rest for a minute. Yeah, just let it, just let it settle down. Okay. This is what it looks like. <laughs> We're going to wait and hope that this butt puffs up. So I'll let you know. We'll be back in Molly's kitchen. Okay. Okay. Well, we're back in Molly's kitchen and I'm making bread with my daughter. I'm so, so excited. So we got a little worried because we didn't think the yeast was really reacting the way we think it is. Yeah, but. it took a little longer than normal. Or I don't know if, can I yeah. uh, show this to the camera? I don't know if, um, it took a little longer than normal, but you should be able to see in the center there, there's a float of foam covering the bowl. Um, so it won't look like watery. Like you should definitely see like a foamy substance. Um, and sometimes it may rise a little bit and you'll really be having distinctive foam. But if you see something like this, 
it should be okay. Yeah. And a lot of times you can even see like it puffing, you know, a little, you can see the yeast dissolve. So there should be some activity at some point, but. Um, okay, so what do we so do? What is this? We're gonna add a little salt to the flour. Okay. So we have a tablespoon and a half of salt and you can use a spoon Okay, this one right here. Yep. And you're just kind of combining it. Um, and then we'll just add the water yeast mixture and that'll be our dough. And I know a lot of you may have bread machines and stuff like that from back in the day, but I don't know. I just think there's something about making homemade bread. And uh, so obviously the yeast is what pops up the bread. Yeah. So and the protein in the, in the flour I'm too. I'm just gonna pour this in. Oh yeah, that's okay. another maybe good point. We're just using regular all-purpose flour. We're not using bread flour or anything. Um, just a white all-purpose mm -hmm. flour. So we just stir this around a little yep. bit? Just mix it up. And so okay. with a crusty bread recipe, the dough will be a little wetter than some other bread recipes. More wet? Yeah. Yeah, more wet. We're not actually gonna do any kneading at all. Um, and this is just for this particular recipe. I think for right. bre uh, sliced bread or something like that, that might do be yeah. something else. Yeah. Or if you're making dinner rolls or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, a lot of times you, you will do some kneading, but yeah, this one, once we combine it all, well, that's kind of what we did with the pizza dough. We, we needed it a mm -hmm. little bit, didn't we? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we did. So, and you can kind of keep a little extra flour on hand just to adjust the wetness if you need Because we got to fo uh, form it or something. Don't we? Don't we have to... Um, well, once we mix this all, we're actually going to cover it and let it rise oh, for okay. two hours. This is actually a pretty simple What do we do with this? So we just go... Yeah. This is a lot more simpler, especially That's if you don't have to knead it. Yeah, bread doesn't have to be um, confusing. <laughs> but oh, it is the no, yeast. The no. yeast gets to get, me. Get yourself a thermometer and you're done with the yeast. Like it's. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I think a digital uh, uh, thermometer, I think, would work really well with me. I just have one of those where, you know, it just gives these different temperatures and stuff like that. But I think I'm gonna get my okay. digital because you know exactly what temperature you're dealing with. So I'm just gonna kind of show the consistency of the dough. It's like, it's pretty wet. Like if you touched that, it would be sticking to your yeah, hands. Yeah, it's sticking to um, my finger. <laughs> exactly, so, but it is kind of, you know, you make sure it's all, all the flour is incorporated. Um, and probably when, after it rises, when we come back to it, um, I'll, I'll add a, dust it with some more flour mm -hmm. so that we can actually handle it. Because yeah. at this point, it's a little... Yeah, it would definitely fact. stick to our hands or anything that we I touch it with. I might even, I'm trying to decide, I might even add a little little sprinkling. Just the bottom part is a little, little wet. Like, you want it to be a little wet, but... And I think you want to be careful of how much flour, like what you just did, so you're not you can always changing the dynamics. Yeah. yeah. So I'm so excited about this. Cause this really feels so much simpler than, I don't know, mine just don't turn out. I try to make cinnamon rolls and I'm like, this is not puffing like it should be. Now you needed your cinnamon roll dough, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I did. So yeah, I feel like this is kind of formed into a little mass. So, um... She's gonna check out her recipe and I tell you, I mean, I'm, she's like me or I'm like her. We don't have all of this stuff memorized. So I often go back to a recipe and check it out. Yeah, so. Um, oh, by the way, what kind of soup did you make? Just like a veggie lentil soup in the crock pot mm -hmm. with like some broth and stuff. I actually added a chicken breast just cause I had it, but it's a, it's a vegetable recipe. And um, Molly and Joel, uh, they don't eat a lot of meat. If at all, kind of, or you do yeah, sometimes. I mean, we do. Like, I put but um, soup, they but... definitely use a lot more uh, vegetables, lettuce, lentils, quinoa, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So she just made a wonderful salad for us again. So I'm going to show that on Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. So yeah. I'm going to take this recipe back with me and I'm going to make it myself so that I can understand it. And so this recipe will be posted on amysroloffslittlekitchen.com and you can find other recipes there or go to my YouTube channel, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. Um, and then, yeah, so at this okay, point- Okay, so are we covering it up? Yep, at this point, you're just gonna put a kitchen so towel. So that's how much it is. And we're gonna take a look at it. And we're gonna let it um, 
rise for about two hours. A lot of recipes will tell you it should double in size. This particular one doesn't say that, and I'm trying to remember the last time I made it. I don't think it quite doubles, but it should, in two hours, be larger than I it think is now. Wouldn't you say that any recipe you do use when it comes to yeast or making bread or something, you should see something of a significant difference there should be between change, when you yeah. put it yeah. in the in your bowl and you don't have to grease that bowl or anything no i just left it in the same bowl because pizza it, pizza dough we added olive oil in yeah the bowl, we, right? we switched it yeah. okay got it um, so here bread. we go we'll see i know bread it's such a science but we'll see you back in two hours because i'm hoping our bread rise and now uh, we're gonna um have some of it when we eat the soup, but we're not quite done yet. So come on back and we'll be back. Okay, so we are back and we're making bread. It's doubled in half. We're in Molly's kitchen. I came here to visit her and she put parchment paper on this pan because that we're gonna put the bread on here. Oh yeah, yep. because it's a round shape. It's yep. not gonna go on a bread loaf pan. So I'm just gonna punch this down, right? Yep, and we'll, we'll divide it. You can just, yeah, do like one punch. And so, okay. Use your fingers to kind of separate it into just two halves. We're gonna, okay. It'll be sticky, so you can add more flour as you need because you don't want it to stick to your hands too much. And then, so basically, what I do is I just kind of see how separate it from the bowl, divide it into chunks, grab one of the chunks, and you don't want to handle it too much because, again, it's going to be sticky. So, you kind of want to just form it quickly into kind of an oval, a roundish oval shape, and then you just kind of plop it on here. Can I just cut this in half but with a spoon, or should yeah. I just do my hands? I just do my hands. Because okay. I don't, want... So um, I don't want the dough to stick to and my as hands. I'm, as I'm... Uh, like one, this? Yep. You're just, yeah, separating it in half. And then just kind of pick up one of the halves as best you can. Okay, you know what? I'm on a stool, people, so I'm gonna get some more leverage here. Okay, and once you have it, just kind of gather it. Oh, you wanna gather it into a ball. Yep. Okay. And kind of stretch the dough over the top. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is more. <laughs> okay. This is a sticky recipe. So what do I do? Just kind of, yep. And once you feel like you have it, it might actually need more flour if it's too wet. Like, don't be afraid to, yeah. Yep, and then plop it down. Okay. That looks good. Yeah, I think this will be good. Okay, so I'm gonna plop it down, people. Now, oh, you don't have to handle it too much. I actually think that this looks, good. looks really good because if it were just kind of like, just spreading out all over the pan, like really plopping, then you'd know your dough was a little bit too wet. But it's actually holding its shape fairly it well. So, so look at that. Everyone can see. Yeah. Since it's holding its shape fairly well, I think we're actually good in our consistency. And so we actually need to let it rest for another 40 minutes. The recipe says 40. I don't always do a full 40. So, I might do like Well, 20. first of all, we already let it rest for 20. We let it ride for, for four, two, hours. two hours. Now we took it out of the bowl. We reshaped it a little bit. And now we're going to let it rest for another 30 before we put it in the oven at what temperature? 450. 450 for? Oh, 450, How long do we cook what it? you're also gonna do um, when you turn the oven on to preheat is put like a cake pan on the bottom rack so it mm -hmm. heats up. And what creates the crispy crust is um, once we put the dough in, you're gonna throw a few ice cubes in the hot pan, which will be on the lower rack and it creates like a steam bath. Okay. So once you're ready to start So this oven, is on the lower yep. shelf of your oven. This is on the next level above. So when we heat up this loaf pan or cake pan or whatever, and then when we put some ice cubes in that, if that creates a steam mm -hmm. around it, which will give it a yeah. like a crispy crust just on the outside of it. Yeah. Now the thing to be careful of is that you are going into an oven and you are putting it in a pan. Do not put it in a glass cake pan or any other kind of glass dish because when that heats up, and you add an ice cube to it, it could crack. Yeah. So be careful you don't drop that on the window glass part of your oven door either. 
So I'm also just, I'm using a knife. I'm just creating a few slits in the top. And why do we do that? Because it just makes it look it nice? It makes it look kind of fun. And I, some people say it helps the dough, like, know which way to expand. I don't okay. know if that's legit. But, um, but yeah, right. so we'll just cover this with a towel and let it rest for about 30 minutes and then pop it in the oven. And that's what it looks like, people. It is spreading out a little bit, but that's Oops. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where's my towel? Want me to pause it? Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll be back after 30 minutes. So, 30 minutes later and here we are. I cannot wait. We are ready to put this baby in the oven and have it turn out to be bread. Spread out a so do you bit, think but... it's gonna puff up a little more or no? It will puff up a little bit more. Um, but it, has, it has kind of flattened a little bit. I mean, it is kind of just like around. So do you think we should have added just a little more flour to it as we were kind of shaping it yeah, a little bit? Yeah, we probably could have added a little bit more flour. Okay. Um, but it'll still be bread. Yeah, and so you want it. So the recipe makes two loaves, and so I'm actually you can just save the other half um, in the fridge for a couple days if you want to covered. Um, but or that won't you can make them both. But that won't affect its rise or the yeast. And it all might that rise stuff. a little bit more, and okay. actually, it um, it might take on a slightly different flavor. Like the yeast mm -hmm. does continue to do stuff, so it adds like actually a little bit of complexity. I think if you the longer you have, you um, okay. let it sit. So, but it'll still continue to rise even though you put it in the A little fridge. bit, it's okay, slower, bit. but. Um, so yeah, we'll okay. pop this in and we'll throw a few of those ice cubes in And the reason pan. we have two, uh, you know, two things that we could make bread, because I made a double recipe and I cut it in half and this is one. And this is another one we'll save for later. So we're gonna put it in the oven at, what temperature again, Mom? 450 for a half hour. 450 for about 30 minutes. But again, you can find this recipe, which I'll post in a few days at AmyRolloffLittleKitchen.com or, or on my YouTube channel, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. So we'll be back and we'll show you, uh, we'll show you what the bread looks like, how it turned out, and as we enjoy the soup that Molly made, and we sit down for dinner, Joel, Molly, and I, and yeah. So I had fun making bread with my daughter, and I'm gonna give it a try when I go home, but I hope you have fun making bread, homemade bread, because I think there's something to be said about that. Bread is what? Food for the soul, Molly? It's delicious is what it is. And she takes after kind of me, and we definitely take after my mom, her grandmother, because my mom loved bread. We had bread at everything. But anyway, see you in a bit. Okay. Moment of truth. Yes, moment of truth. We are back in Molly's kitchen and I'm so excited to be baking bread with her. Here it is, she's bringing it out, wait a minute. And so I think it turned out great. You should see how it puffed up and you know, just really. Yeah, see, look at that. You wanna tip it over, just Hold tip on. it slightly, Hold yeah. Hang on, we're getting it in a minute. But um, no, I think it's gonna be delicious bread. So Molly made some great soup. We're gonna break bread, enjoy this wonderful meal, and look at it? this. Tap it. Good what? Pretty, I think it's done. It's a little crusty. hollow, or yeah, it's pretty yeah. crusty on top. I it really it is. Well. It's I got think the little it marks too. from where we cut the. Yeah, we cut it here and here. Nice. So I'm excited to break it and eat it and share with them. So anyway, Amy's roll off little kitchen in Molly's kitchen, and again, thank you for. Uh, letting me be a part of your kitchen. This recipe will be up at amyrolloffslittlekitchen.com or feel free to go to my YouTube channel at Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen as well. So, Molly, thank you. I've had so much fun making bread with her. See you later. Bye.